Hola a todos, bienvenidos a Technology Hub, buenas noches. Bueno, para iniciar, eh, les recuerdo que estamos transmitiendo en vivo a través de Facebook y esto es una coproducción de Borderland TV, Estudio A y Technology Hub. A la gente que nos está viendo en Facebook, les agradezco mucho que estén eh, ahí con nosotros. Y les recuerdo que al final de la sesión también ustedes pueden hacer preguntas para, para nuestros expositores y nosotros se las, se las haremos a ellos. Uh, para, uh, siempre que nosotros iniciamos una sesión como esta, tenemos ya como un ritual. Y es comenzar preguntándoles, ¿quién es la primera vez que nos visita? Dos, tres, cuatro. Muy bien. Cinco. Si es la primera vez que nos visitan, les voy a pedir, por favor, que saquen su celular y se conecten a nuestra red de internet que está por aquí enfrente. Y por los lados. Ah, no, pues no pasa nada, ¿eh? no nos conectamos. <risa> sí, con, con el del vecino. Muy bien. Nuestra red es invitados, T-Hub. La contraseña es emprender uno con la primera E mayúscula. La red es invitados de Hub, la contraseña es emprender uno con la primera de mayúscula, ahí está alrededor de todo el, el, de toda la sala. Ahora, darles la contraseña del internet no es de gratis, ¿eh? Les voy a pedir que se vayan a Facebook y nos regalen el like en Facebook, búsquenos como Technology Hub. Sobre todo los chicos de los bravos para que nos den mucha viralidad. Pueden tomar fotos durante la charla y compartirlas. La idea de el like en Facebook es esa, sí. Es como rosa la portada ahorita. Colabora, conecta, crea. Y... Que hagan check-in. El check-in es la publicación más viral de Facebook. Le dice la, a más número de mis amigos que están en, en algún lugar, en este caso en Technology Hub. Y lo que queremos es que la gente sepa que charlas como esta ocurren todos los jueves a las 6.30 de la tarde y que tenemos un experto que nos está hablando sobre su tema de experiencia. Nos comparte 20 minutos, después nos vamos a preguntas y respuestas y terminamos con un tiempo de networking en el que podemos platicar personalmente con los expositores que se quedan un ratito con nosotros todavía a seguir compartiendo de su experiencia. Y todos los miércoles a las 5 de la tarde, sobre todo para la gente que es nueva, tenemos tour por nuestras instalaciones. Les presentamos qué es Technology, los programas que están próximos, incluso el, el siguiente Hapta, que es el, de, el del día de hoy. Y eh, bueno, les damos un, un recorrido por todas las instalaciones. Eh, ¿Alguien de ustedes vino al tour del día de ayer? ¿No? Muy bien. Si conocen a alguien que le interese los espacios de coworking, tenemos ahora una dinámica si vienen al tour. Y nos los topamos el jueves en el Hubtack, o sea, de miércoles a jueves. Les regalamos una semana de cowork para que puedan trabajar en el, entonces, los espacios de coworking en Technology Hub. ¿no? Entonces, es una manera ahí de, de alentarlos a que nos conozcan y también este, a que vengan ahí y aprovechen este tipo de charlas. Eh, bueno, yo los voy a dejar haciendo check-in y, y el resto. Y les quiero presentar a Alba Batista. Ella es Storyteller en Technology Hub y nos va a hacer la presentación de la charla del día de hoy. Hi, everyone. Our guests today are self-directed learning coaches. They will share stories from their travels around the world with the international organization Coaches Across Continents. As global leaders in sport for social impact, CAC partners with local governments, corporations, NGOs, and community leaders in over 40 countries. By using sport as a tool for education outside the classroom, CAC's curriculum empowers partners to challenge the status quo and create pathways for social change. Please welcome Mark Gabriel and Emily Kruger. We need it for the social media people. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay, no problem. Would you like us up there? Do we need to stand up there? No, wherever you want. No? Here's okay? I would like to start with a question. Why do you believe what you believe? I was fortunate enough to grow up in a school which taught me what is healthy foods, 
what is unhealthy foods, what my diet should be, and definitely what food is. And me and my friends all had the same fortune. So you can imagine my friend's excitement and confusion when I was traveling around in Cambodia, and I sent them a photo of this big, brown, juicy, little furry, lemon-sauced tarantula that I was eating. And they all said, that's not food. What are you doing? Why would you do that? And it made me think, why would I do that? And my mom had the same questions when I was in Oaxaca. And I told her, I can't stop eating these delicious grasshoppers that are on every street. And I can still fear, feel her shiver every time I say grasshoppers. She hates that word now. But I again thought, I've learned what food is in school. My friends did. My mom taught me what food is. But in Oaxaca, our next door neighbor, as far as countries go, they think something different. And so it made me think that, why do I believe what I believe? Why do communities believe what they believe? And I think it goes down to social norms or accepted truths. And this could frame what you should believe, how you should behave, what you should do, how you should do things. And it could be very different from one country to the neighboring country, much like in Mexico you can eat amazing grasshoppers, in the United States you can't. But it can go so much further than grasshoppers and tarantulas. It can frame the truth in your life, and it can frame the way you see the truth in others. So I want to ask another question. Are you confident in what you believe and in what you know? And I think about if I ask the same question to people of the past, why do you think the Earth is flat? Everybody would say, because it is. Everybody knows it is. There's a couple of people who are crazy and think it's a disk or they think it's round maybe, but we know it's flat until you didn't know that, until it was challenged. And I think that's where coaches across continents comes in. It's no problem to have beliefs. There's no problems to have opinions. But coaches across continents encourages you to ask why. Why do you have those beliefs? in what you believe. Because everything, everybody has a what, but I don't think everybody has a why. And I think coaches across continents comes in to fill that gap. So basically the way it works is our organization partners with um, groups, NGOs, sometimes corporates, sometimes governments, um, local school districts, national school districts even as well. And we work with a group of adults, so teachers, coaches, sometimes just community leaders, even parents. Um, and they come for a week-long training with us. And we uh, work on our uh, Sport for Social Impact curriculum, as well as our self-directed learning methodology. In addition to the one week that we do on field, so like that's why we're here in Juarez right now, right? We also do year-round consultancy. So we have an online education program, and we also have webinars where we invite all of our partners from over 40 countries, as was mentioned earlier, and they can get online and be sharing ideas with each other and sharing stories with each other. And as Mark is talking about now, status quo, asking why, asking, you know, why, why do I believe what I believe and where did that come from? And these are the kinds of conversations that we're creating with our partners. And the idea is that it's happening with the adults so that they can then in turn do it with the children that they work with. And it'll kind of start this new trend of having young people starting to ask these questions as well. Um, we heard here in Juarez even that from our participant this week, yeah, people always just tell us what to do. You know, I've always just had a teacher say, do this, do that. And now they're thinking, oh, maybe I could ask the students what they want to do. So we're going to get more into that uh, as we continue. So. So as we are coaches, I think the best example or the best way to show you would be by example. So I would love to have some volunteers come up here and we will run you through a quick game and then I can show you what self-directed learning looks like and how coaches across continents does so. So do we have any brave people in the crowd? We got one. <laughs> 
I would love at least two. We got two. A round of applause, please. What are your names? Um, Mariana. Gilberto. Thank you very much for joining us. OK, so I will put cones down on the ground. And I would like my two volunteers to please hold hands. So in this game, there are, there's one rule, two rules, I suppose. You must maintain contact throughout the entirety of the game. And you must jump over the cones. And that's it. Okay, and now I will challenge you to find another way to complete the same task, another way to jump over the cones. You must maintain contact the whole time, and you must try to jump over the cones. You must maintain, maintain contact the whole time. And so during this game, you guys can continue, you can already see that all I'm doing is posing a question, really simple instructions, and they're already co communicating with each other. <laughs> Don't worry about the codes. Keep going. <laughs> they're having to find where to go, how to do it. She's already asked questions of, do we have to maintain hands? They're finding different solutions on their own. Do we have another? <laughs> and for the same problem, they've already had four different solutions. And now, can I ask you guys to have input on is there another rule that you could add to this game? Another rule that you could add? OK. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> So now, the participants, you guys can keep continuing. So imagining that these are children, we've not only created a space in which they can find multiple solutions to the same problem, which is a valuable thing off the field, but you've also <laughs> validated, continue please. <laughs> you've also validated their voice in the sense that they are able to create a progression during the game, and now all of the players who are playing the game will take part. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, very simple game, just cones on the ground, all you have to do is jump over it. But as we saw, one problem, there were four solutions. And then their voice was validated by them coming up with an idea and imagining this is a classroom of, say, 30 kids, all the other kids are now having to do that rule or follow that. And so those two understand that their voice is being heard and is valued, while all of the other kids see that it's not the classroom that's my classroom. I'm just there creating a guide, and it's really the classroom for the kids. Something that I also find very valuable for coaches across continents is allowing them to do examples for everything. So that was their idea, but also I didn't listen, say, OK, and then I do the example because I know how to do it best. We allowed them to do the example. So they were the teachers in that game. One game we love very much is called Circle of Friends. And it's very simple again. You're in a very big circle, which is beautiful because everyone's equal. Everyone has eye contact. You don't have lines where people are waiting, not doing anything, but we're all in the same community together. And we've played this in Juarez every day. And during the session yesterday, we started with a couple of examples. And then after that, we stepped back. We said, now it's your game. And so we're working with teachers now, but kids would do the same thing. Kids now have a space to do their examples. 
And when the next person is ready, they yell, stop, I have an example. Now they go ahead. So we went on for 20 minutes. We did three, three, four minutes of stuff and nothing more. And then they created the game the rest of the time. Something else special that I would like to add with that is during creating the space that we validate their voice and let them know that their opinion matters, we are also able to ask powerful questions. And that can be in circle of friends when you exchange on the outside, or it can be like a game we played yesterday, which is a simple square. The coach asks a question, and they have to answer the question. The first person answers their question, they go to the next person, and it's a team of four. And the last person would say all four answers. It's very simple. Sounds very simple, because it is. But the beauty of it is you can ask questions of something like, what animal would you like to be? And kids want to be a monkey. Kids want to be a dinosaur. They'll say anything, and they get really into it. And then when they're having fun, you can ask a question, what is a safe space you like to go to? Or what is the biggest challenge in school? And so we call that social mapping. And what that means is you are creating a space much like what a teacher said yesterday. So I would just quote a teacher in Juarez. He said that by creating a space that's a safe space for these kids, they are much more willing to answer tough questions and say things about themselves that maybe they wouldn't want to do in an average conversation because they find it very intimidating when you're talking to adult an adult says, what is the hardest, place in, or hardest thing in school? Or where is the safe space you go to? And maybe they don't want to have that conversation. But if it's in a game, it's a second thought. The thought is the game and having fun. And if you have to answer a difficult question, yeah, you're going to do it because you want to play the game. So I think that's part of the beauty of Coaches Across Continents. So Mark just touched on a few really important points. So one is the self-directed learning piece, asking questions, posing a problem that then the participants, whether it's us working with adults or then those adults working with their children. Um, like here, it was a, you know, posing a problem and they're solving their own problem. They're coming up with the solutions as well as the social mapping. So asking questions, getting information coming from the group you're working with through the game. The other piece that's also important I hope this isn't too much and overwhelming you all, but is the social messaging piece. So having games that have messages embedded into them, usually through some kind of metaphor. <clears throat> so we do have over 300 partners that we've been working with, and I'd like to tell a story from one of my favorites, a group I was with last year. Um, basically what happened is we were playing a game, normal game of soccer, football, if you could imagine, just two teams. But what you do is you have half of each team they're not allowed to move, they're stationary. So they're just standing. This is something I actually did growing up playing competitive soccer. It's kind of a normal type of game to play. But what we go ahead and do with it is now as they're playing, and you notice they're not really using the stationary players very much. And this is exactly what happened this time when I was doing it. And <laughs> you're like, stop the game. You ask, why aren't you using them? Why, why aren't you playing it to them? You can, and they're like, oh, well, I don't know. I forgot about them. I mean, why would I pass it to them? And so then you ask the people who are stationary, how does that feel? How do you feel? They say, hmm, I'm frustrated. I'm bored. I want to play, but I, I can't, and I don't like it. And then this is where the, the metaphor part comes in, and I love this. You can say, well, outside of the field, in your life, have you ever felt like that before? What happened in this instance was one of the women spoke up, and this was a big deal for this, this partner where there aren't many women who are coming to these trainings. And this one woman said, yeah, you know, I used to, you know, I always wanted to play, and my parents, they always said I could not. And they always told me I couldn't, and I was very frustrated, and I wanted to go play. And she said, and now I'm a coach, and I still have all these adults in my life saying, why are you a soccer coach? You know, that's not a job for women. That's not even a good job. Why are you doing that? You know, you should be in the home. You should be doing something different. She said, yeah, it's really frustrating. And she paused, and she said, but... My older brother always invited me to go play. He always said, hey, I'm going with my friends. Do you want to come with me? She always said yes. And that was such a big deal for her as a young girl. And now as an adult, her brother is still walking around and saying, I'm so proud of my baby sister for being a soccer coach and for being a strong female role model. And I, you know, I think it's so great that women are out there doing different jobs and playing sports. 
kind of maybe changing the attitudes of some people, right? And so we said, okay, that's amazing. In the game, what could we do to represent that? What do you think? And we agreed as a group, well, maybe the players, they could pass the ball to the players who are stationary and say something that empowers them. I'm proud of you. I think you're intelligent. I think you're great at what you do. And then now, that person's free. Now they can move. So we added this layer, and it was interesting. One of the teams did it almost instantly. They unfroze all their players. You know, you're amazing. You're beautiful. I think you're great. And just like that, they're free. The other team freed some of their players, but forgot about some. It was very interesting. At the end, we said, okay, what happened here? What, 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 what's going on? You could free them. Why didn't you? And they're like, oh my, we forgot. We were so concerned with scoring a goal. We were so into our own objective, we forgot about these other people. We asked them, well, what could you do differently to the people who are stationary? And they said, well, we could have asked for help, I guess. We didn't think of it, though. They just, they thought, wow. Yeah, maybe next time we would say, hey, hey, can you help me? Can you help me? And the group who was saying, oh, we forgot, would say, oh, my, oh, okay, yeah, 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 come with us. We want to invite you in. So this is a group in this, in this lovely little town where women traditionally have not been invited in, right? Whether it's sports or just jobs in general, even going to school longer. You have lots of girls doing chores and, you know, these traditions that, the group there is saying, I think this is holding us back. I think we should do something different. And so what's amazing is through that game, we're starting to have that conversation. And they're thinking, we could maybe play this game with our kids. And I wonder what they would think. And I wonder what they would talk about. Um, here in Juarez, actually, we changed it. Or we played the same game, sorry, but the group adapted the message. And they thought, this, I feel, is about the kids in Juarez that live in kind of the segregated neighborhoods that don't make as much money. And maybe they're the stationary players who don't have opportunities and feel like they can't move. And the teachers are the ones that have to invite them in and have to show them what more they can do. And so with this other partner, it was about women. And it became about how do we get more women having more opportunities. And here, it was more about class and income. And I thought that was really interesting. And I, again, something I love about Coaches Across Continents is these messages and these games, the curriculum, are very adaptable. So we have the self-directed learning, posing a problem, letting people solve their own problems, being creative, as well as messaging, social messaging through the games. So I hope that makes sense. Um, okay. Yeah, and I would just like to yeah, add on to that, that the adaptability, I think, is maybe the most unique part, because um, an organization coming in for one week, as she said, we work with adults to impact their kids. And so we don't know what is best for the communities where we go because we're there for one week. But we do know a good technique that they could use for their kids. So I think the adaptability for any community is the most essential part. In every game we've played this week, at the end, they name a theme during the game and we again ask, what is something else you would like to talk about with your kids? And they may name segregation or they may name rights for kids with disabilities. And then they talk about how they could use the same game for a different message. So the adaptability component is why we are able to do this job everywhere. Because it's not the same message, it's not the same thing. It changes, every game changes, every week changes based on what they want to talk about. Okay, and now I remember the last piece we want to talk about is the year-round partnership. So with each of these partners, we are involved in, it's a three-year partnership and it is year-round. So although we do come in person only for one week to go through these trainings and play the games and go over the methodology and get to really work with people face-to-face, -face, we do stay in touch year-round. So I mentioned earlier, I alluded to it, the online education program where we have folks from all the different partners able to get online and communicate with each other, sharing games, sharing ideas, developing their own games through a sports session planner um, technology, which is really, really cool. And then we also have webinars where they're also getting online and talking to each other, but that isn't necessarily about curriculum development. It could be any topic. So for example, these past two months leading up to International Women's Day next week, we've been holding webinars regarding women's rights policies, as well as um, just kind of hearing the stories from all the different groups of what's going on in their communities regarding gender equity. So we now have going into next week, it's on March 8th, which was a week from yesterday, so it's coming up. Um, we do have groups, you know, in 
like I said, over 40 countries, um, all working on having a policy. So that would be something written. It could be something lengthy, it could be pages long, it could be something very short. We're committed to you know, making sure that, for the example from the partner I just had, uh, was speaking about boys and girls playing equally, like having more women coaches, having more girls teams, right? So that could be a commitment. And then what we're challenging our partners to do is to bring those policies to life and not just have it get written down and then nothing actually happen. So the way we bring policy to life is through the games, through the curriculum. So we've also sent our, our curriculum to all of the folks, um, specifically these games that would bring out messages about gender equity so that they can play those games with their children on International Women's Day and bring the policy to life. So depending on what the policy was that they've created all on their own, they would change the game however they needed to and change their messaging the way that they want to. So we know, uh, for instance, we've already heard people's plans a little bit. So in Peru, we have a group that will be getting together um, a bunch of mothers. So these are coaches who work with the daughters and they're getting together the mothers to play the games with them, to then have these conversations with the moms, which I love that. I think it's really unique, really special. Um, we have a group in Zimbabwe who said they're holding a festival for like three days and there's gonna be music and dancing as well as sport. And it's called, it's like the Women's Empowerment Through Sport Festival. I thought, wow, that's also really unique. Um, in Cameroon, they're launching a co-ed under 14 league on International Women's Day. So they'll have an event and then it'll, they'll say, hey, we have all these teams that are boys and girls and they're gonna be competing and playing together. Um, what was the last one? In Nepal, they're going to um, have boys and girls playing the games together with the coaches who are already there. And it's interesting because we do hear a lot, oh, we'll play the games with the girls and we'll empower them. But we had this group in Nepal saying, well, we want to have the boys there too because that's a huge part of the puzzle and we need to have them playing together and sharing these stories together and making sure that they're questioning the status quo and questioning those traditions and wondering why it is the way it is. So we're really excited for Wednesday. Um, yeah, it's going to be really cool. Yeah, and Anything with that, on? anybody in this room can also celebrate International Women's Day <laughs> with your community. It doesn't yeah. have to be games. It could be anything, but everyone is welcome to celebrate. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. So now it's time for a Q&A. I would like to remind the people on Facebook that they can also participate. So anyone have a question? find some particularity in our teachers in our uh, uh, that are taking this seminar with you some differences from the teachers in other countries something that you really uh, were surprised <laughs> to find out <laughs> okay I'll give one short answer and then maybe Mark will have a different one so it's been a really incredible week because these teachers have already started to have some I think training officially from what we were gathering in the methodology of self-directed learning, so allowing children to solve their own problems. So a lot of places we go, that is a brand new concept. They are so confused, they're like, what? No, you have to tell the kid exactly where to go and what to do, and so they're shocked. This group this week, they're less surprised by it, but I think we're digging even deeper. And for me, the most interesting thing was hearing them say, yeah, we didn't grow up with that. So it is, it is still new for them, even though, yeah, it's definitely not brand new this week, but it's still new. And so they're trying to work, okay, catch themselves when they're telling a kid, wait a sec, maybe I could ask a question instead of telling them they have to. So that's been really cool. Anything else? No? Yeah. Anybody else have another question? We need to use the mic because of the people on Facebook. That's the reason. <laughs> Anybody else? You guys sure? Okay, uh, I would like to ask the, the opposite. Have you found like a more common problem across the, the cities or the communities you, you have been working with? Like something that in most of the places they have been working not really good in that specific area, empowering kids or something like that? Mm. Yeah, I would like to preface this by I don't think it's anything wrong. I just think it's different. But something that I have noticed um, is what I call teacher talk time, or the amount of time that the coach or teacher talks. So something that we tried to do is 80% talk. No, not that. 80% play, 20% talk. Um, and the reason being 
is because if you put yourself in kids' shoes, they just want to play. They don't want to listen to you talk. That's the most boring part. And so what we find special in the way we coach is that the message is in the game. So much like the example here, the self-directed learning part or the, the um, yeah, the message is in the game as far as thinking of different solutions. And I think a lot of teachers know that they have good answers, and so they want to share their good answers. And they're only good for so long until they lose the attention of the kids. Um, so I think that's maybe the biggest thing, is um, teaching them that the more times the kids have to talk and think for themselves is the most valuable. I also think the game that I referenced with the partner from last year, where people were frozen and you could invite them in, I think in general this idea of social inclusion is one that is relevant always. So no matter who we're working with, no matter which country it is, um, which community it is even, that is always relevant. And there's always some group of people or even individual people who might feel excluded. And so the teachers, I think, really those games are really impactful because they're, again, like I said, it's adaptable, so it doesn't matter what the group is, but the idea of exclusion and inclusion and trying to think about, well, why are people excluded and why are these people not and how, how can I do something? How can I, if I feel like I'm empowered, how could I empower someone else? How can we work together? Um, I think that's everywhere. Okay, we have a question from Facebook by Katia Escobar. Is there something in common in all the countries that left you a good feeling about your work? I love smiles. People smile a lot when we play games. And as I said, just the fun of the activities, it creates a great platform for what we do. And if they're not having fun, they won't return. And so I think just take the training session aside from social impact, aside from that, the amount of fun people have playing the games is tremendous. And when you can add something as powerful as social impact in it, it is amazing that we can have so much fun, kids can have so much fun, even when they're thinking about things that are just so far from what they would imagine would be on a football field. So. Yeah, the, the balance of fun and s kind of serious at times, and I think for the coaches to then go and do that with their children is incredible, right? So to be able to, yeah, have people laughing and then also learning at the same time, maybe even also talking about something kind of intense for a moment at the end, but I think the memory of it is always the fun part, which, yeah, we love that for sure. Okay, so we know that you work with teachers. Uh, why don't you work with kids directly? So, we find that if we were to work with kids directly, there are a few messages that we would send. Um, one would be that people coming from another country know what's best, and even if it's your students, I know how to teach your students better. Um, so that's one message that we don't want to ever send, because as I mentioned earlier, we don't know what's best. We don't know what's in your community, and we definitely don't know what's in your community as well as you do. Um, the second part is that the sustainability of working with kids for one week is not there. If we worked with kids for one week, there would be a lot of smiles, I'm sure, but after that one week, it would be over. The idea of working with teachers, coaches, community leaders, is that moving forward, they can take some of the ideas that we talked about and continue using those throughout the school year. So right now, we're working with gym teachers. In all of Sonora, we worked with gym teachers and they're able to implement that in their curriculum in their schools and use that with their kids this year, next year, and moving forward. And they can adapt it, create it. Um, but the power of the change comes from their community leaders and comes from their own teachers, not from us. Not to mention, we don't speak Haitian Creole or Swahili or <laughs> Hindi or any of these languages in all of these places. So working with the kids, again, lots of fun, but uh, yeah, a little silly. <laughs> Thank you very much, Emily and Mark. We will have time for more questions during a networking session in the end. Um, I would like to ask our CEO, Ricardo Mora, 
um, to give Mark and Emily a small token of our appreciation for giving us this talk today. Uh, Mark and Emily, thank you for collaborating with us on the talk about coaches across continents and thank you for allowing us to build a community motivated on, <coughs> sorry for my, <coughs> for, uh, to, it's in Spanish, I'm trying to translate it at the same time. <laughs> motivated community, I'm gonna read it in Spanish. Gracias yeah. por colaborar con la plática coaches across continents para construir una comunidad motivada a través del conocimiento colaborativo. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with Ciudad Juarez. Gracias. Thank you so much. Thank you. We will also like to uh, thank Karen Yarza uh, from the El Paso and Norte Foundation who made this possible for us today. Thank you, Karen. And uh, we, w we want to ask also the people from Studio A and Borderland TV uh, we, who are collaborating us, with us today to be streaming live on Facebook. And um, right now we have uh, some of the team members from our local soccer team. And we would like them to come up here and take a picture with us. Bravo. 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 Selfie. Thank you everybody for being here. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna say goodbye to the people on Facebook right now. Thank you very much. And we wanna thank you everybody for being here tonight. We, you can have some drinks outside. Thank you and we are Connecting Minds. Good night everybody. Thank you for coming.